It was definitely a spirited and intriguing debate last night here on Denver 7 between the two Democratic candidates for U.S. Senate. A former Speaker of the House here in Colorado, Andrew Romanoff, and former Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper both want to represent Democrats against the incumbent Republican Senator Cory Gardner. Now, a lot was said during last night's debate. Was it all true? Chief investigative reporter Tony Kovaleski spent the day crunching the claims and fact-checking the rhetoric. Dark money attacks by Republicans who are going to attack me or whoever the Democrat uh, candidate is. Well, they're not going to attack me for breaking the state ethics law because I didn't. And I it didn't was a debate that provided its fair share of memorable moments. Andrew, you haven't won yet statewide. And a debate where candidates attacked their opponent's greatest vulnerability. The moment that we saw that their, their subpoena was upheld, uh, I came in the next day, I testified uh, I was in front of that commission for three hours. Uh, and as you know, these were trips that I took uh, while I was governor uh, promoting Colorado. But we are here to address the facts, to provide you perspective on what was said. We went from 40th in job creation to the number one economy in the country. It's one of the former Colorado governor's favorite talking points. He often used it during his brief run for president. I'm running for president because we need dreamers in Washington. So is it true? Well, it is true if you believe three consecutive years of the U.S. News and World Report. During his final two years in office, the nationally recognized magazine credited then-Governor Hickenlooper for making Colorado a prime spot for business growth. But, to add perspective, that was just one publication, and others did give Colorado high rankings during that time, but did not always rank our state at the top. I was able to pass more legislation as a freshman legislator than any other member of the Democratic caucus. I don't want to kid you here. Uh, I was a, one of the most effective legislative leaders in America. <laughs> that was candidate Romanoff's favorite resume reference. He's referring to his time under the Golden Dome, a claim that is true based on two credible sources. When Romanoff was Speaker of the House, the National Conference of State Legislatures gave him the Excellence in State Legislative Leadership Award, and a California publication named him the 2008 Public Official of the Year. Well, first, let me say that I've, uh, we take no corporate PAC money of any kind, not from the oil and gas industry, for anybody. Now to the complicated and controversial chapter of money from political action committees, or PACs. My loyalty is plainly to Colorado. I don't take money from special interest groups. Candidate Romanoff forced former Governor Hickenlooper to defend his acceptance of PAC money. According to the website OpenSecrets.org, Hickenlooper has gathered nearly $300,000 in money from PACs so far, which represents less than 4% of his total contributions. His campaign points out Hickenlooper has not accepted any corporate PAC money only PACs representing groups and unions that have endorsed the former governor. On the other side of the podium, candidate Romanoff was accurate in saying he has not received or accepted any PAC money. When it comes to the fossil fuel industry, for example, there are twice as many jobs to be had in renewable energy and energy efficiency as there are in oil and gas. Romanoff was citing this report from an environmental group. And internet searches show it's a fact claimed by many other environmental groups. In the end, two candidates weaving words and facts to try to win your vote. A debate that ended with kind words from both candidates. First of all, thank you for giving us the opportunity to share some thoughts with you tonight. Well, thank you for tonight. And, and these are tough times, but Colorado's always been up to the test. The final words will be said on the 30th of this month, the final day for you to submit your mail-in ballot. Following the campaign, I'm Chief Investigative Reporter Tony Kovaleski.